Hey folks, JD here. And today I thought we would dive into the Tello app a little bit more and see some of the settings that we didn't look at last time. So as you'll remember, we went out last time, we had a look at the return to home feature, the photo feature, take a uh, record video feature, the uh, a couple of other ones as well, including palm and palm landing. Now today what we're going to be focused on are these three lines, the hamburger menu over on the top left hand corner. If of course you haven't seen the original video and you want to see it, you'll find that in the description. So let's click the three lines up here. Now what you'll notice is that now opens a side menu and it's this particular menu that we are very interested in. So let's look at main settings. So main settings, this is where you can change the ca some characteristics of your quadcopter. So you can change your altitude limit, so you can change it up to, there we go, higher than the limit of 10 meters. You can change it up to 20 or even further, I think up to 30 is maximum. Yeah, so I don't want it up as high as that. I'll have it up as, up. come on, there we are, as 18 meters. This is a little bit awkward in the, with this slider. Low battery warning is at 15. So I'll leave that at 15 because I quite like to have that reminder at 15%. Although it is, now I've moved it, the slider is a bit tricky. There we go. So max altitude is, uh, sorry, attitude is 15 degrees. You can alter that as well if you want to. You can also change from metric to imperial and you can confirm takeoff, yes or no. Now, if you look at the second page, return to home, you can have a minimum altitude. So when you hit return to home, the home button in the top left hand corner next to the uh, the hamburger menu that we're looking at, you it will automatically rise itself up or lower itself down based on your specifications. Because there's no minimum set, it'll come back on the tr on the the trajectory that it's currently sat at. And the speed limit for return to home is three meters per second. Of course, if you want to, you can turn on sport mode for return to home and watch it come back at a rate of knots but be warned if you do that it will drain the battery a lot quicker and then you have miscellaneous which is stretch video to fit screen if you want to have that so you'll see there my aspect ratio alters totally whereas there's a cutoff top and bottom if I click it you'll see that cutoff is removed see uh, OSD color green if you want to you can change that to orange depends on what you want your on-screen display to look at audible notifications I like that is where it talks to you return to home activated and things like that throttle up to cancel landing again very handy it means you can take back control within a split second and language uh, is the system default which is English but of course you can choose different ones there should you want to now to go back into the menu those are the main settings we looked at of course you can go back in there at any time uh, and change whatever you want what i would do is make a note of your default settings so you always have a setting that you can change back should you click on something that you 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 that you change and you don't want to actually change it video and photo so here you can alter your bitrate you can alter the the, the the iframe interval as well. Skip corrupt video frames. So if a video frame does skip, uh, like a, the, the issue the Tello had when it first came out, you can get around that by skipping corrupt video frames. But be warned, if you enable that, your video will jump. So you'll have one frame, and then you may not have the, the next frame for about three or four frames. So when you do actually see that video and play it back, it won't be in sync. Monitor stream recovery so you can have this is where you can monitor the actual stream of video and it'll try and recover the video to best that it possibly can. Save H H264 stream so save in H264 format. Show corruption indicator if you want to you can turn that on and it'll show you when there's when there is actually corruption taking place and start record on takeoff once again you can turn that on. That's something I like to have on so I'm going to leave that on for myself. Photos, you can re-encode JPEG should you want to to fix any problems. You can rotate to, uh, and crop to level. You can add altitude, which is something I want. I love the telemetry, as you know, so having that in there is quite cool for me. Photo quality is automatically set to high. Self timer is five seconds, so you can hit the timer, position yourself, and after five seconds, a photo will take. Number of photos for Pano 360, this is uh, it's being set to 10. So if you do create a pano, uh, then in a 360 format, then it'll take 10 photos so you can splice those together. So if we click back, this is the one bugbear I have from, what, from me using this particular app. 
when you click or click to go back there's a back arrow see if i show you if you go back to photo and video there's an arrow there on the right hand side if you click that it gets rid of the uh of the window um and i haven't found a way to actually get it to go back to this menu without clicking back on myself so let's click on controller so this is where you can add yourself a physical transmitter should you want to uh, and also you can auto hide the uh, on-screen joysticks should you want to as well master controller for the second set to on screen if you do have a bluetooth one it'll show up here likewise with student controller it'll show up underneath there as well so on screen or um or your bluetooth uh, transmitter that you have uh, that you have connected you can also scan for new controllers so if you have synced one up and it's not showing in the app click scan for new controllers and it should then pop up once you've done that and then your mapping so this is your your throttle rolling pitch uh, and just getting it set up however you want to have it set up as well as for takeoff and landing and all these other options under here i would recommend you go through these options and see whether these best fit yourself don't forget though if you do have a transmitter connected click where it says on screen at the top and change that to, to transmitter right now we go back in let's look at fine tuning controls so this are these are your your rates your exposures and your dead zone as well so inside here you can change whatever you want about this make sure if you have a physical transmitter connected you click on the controller side of, side of the screen and you choose which controller you have access for your you can also click the drop down and alter the throttle roll and pitch i'm happy with how this works so i'm not going to alter any of that for myself likewise with sport mode you can alter the finer settings of that too right now let's go into flight log this i find very very interesting so i love my telemetry i love my flight information i like to review it uh, later on and go over after my flights are completed uh, so this is very handy for me so the total number of flights three Total flight time, as including the total distance covered, max flight time, max speed that I've hit, and my last flight, uh, flight time, 3 minutes 54, just when I was recording some of the back of my head. Um, battery start, 91%, battery land, 60%, so it gives you an overall good overview of how your quadcopter is performing on every single flight, as well as your speed and other records. I find that very, very handy. Now we go into gravity calibration. So this is only something we can calibrate in flight. We shall look at that when we come to look at part three and we go back through some of these settings again and just to cement what we've learned so far and see with the changes that we've made, what our, how our quadcopter performs. So just before I sign off, we've got a few other things here. Help. So that then launches the PDF manual uh, if you've got uh, Adobe Acrobat installed. If not, as you will see from that pop-up that I just dismissed, you can install it from there. Uh, your about screen. So this tells you who uh, actually who the the your device ID as well as who the developer is as well as the credits and whereas you have your um, um, a website there as well for all the icons should you want to look at those any further or try and see if you can customize those yourself so there we go that is just a little look at the Tello FPV settings in the right hand corner in the left hand corner rather so there we go so with all these settings make sure you take a backup first of everything that you've got just by writing them down make sure you you know exactly what it is you're changing and why you're changing that so that when you do actually change something it the quadcopter will respond in a way that you want it to and not in a way that could be dangerous for you or for the quadcopter all right then my friends thank you for ever so much for watching part two part three is coming very very soon i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying